My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is entitled, Can a Hiatal Hernia Cause Atrial Fibrillation? A lot of people with heart rhythm disturbances like atrial fibrillation will often complain that their symptoms tend to be worse when they feel more bloated or they've been suffering from indigestion. And therefore, a common question I get asked is whether pathology in the stomach could in some way be contributing to their heart symptoms getting worse. Often these patients will also say that they've been to their doctors, they've asked their own doctors whether this could be the case, whether there could be a relationship between their stomach and their heart, and more often than not the doctor has turned around and said to them, no, that cannot be the case, they're totally different, there's no relationship, and the poor patient is often felt, is often left feeling despondent, and almost made to feel silly for having asked such a question. I can categorically tell you that any doctor who says that there's no relationship between the heart and the stomach is wrong. There are lots of reasons for me to say this. First, I think the most important thing to understand is this, that if there were no patients, there would be no doctors. So the patient is the most important part of this, this relationship between doctors and patients. If you're the patient and you're the person experiencing the symptoms, a good doctor should be listening to you and working with the information you provide him. A good doctor should not suddenly make their mind up that you're mad just because you're describing something that has not been written in some outdated textbook. Good doctors study patients rather than just relying on what they've read in books. If you, as the patient, have reliably noticed a close temporal relationship between stomach symptoms and heart symptoms, then that relationship exists for you. And therefore, your doctor should be taking that information and using that information to help work out a management plan. If your doctor is not aware of this relationship, then what the doctor should be saying is not that, oh, there is no relationship. What he should be saying is, Let's look into it. Let's, let's explore this a bit further. Let's find out if other people have experienced the same thing. I have spoken to a ton of people, and they all say this, that when their stomach symptoms are bad, their heart palpitations get worse. And the second thing to say is that the body is one complex system, and the different organs, including the brain, and even the mind, all work together to maintain health. It is a mistake to think that these are separate systems, and therefore, any one part of the body's mal you know, any one part of the body which malfunctions will have implications on other systems as well and the whole body as a whole. So that's again very important that, you know, of course, if something's going on with the stomach, you will experience other symptoms which are not stomach related. Or which may not immediately point to the stomach, right? Okay. Number three, lots of lifestyle factors such as smoking, excess caffeine weight gain, alcohol, stress, all these things will cause concurrent pathology both in the stomach and in the heart. Another thing to say is that the, the innervation, the nerve supply to the stomach and the heart is the same. There is an autonomic connection between the stomach and the heart. Resting and digesting go hand in hand. And these are modulated by a nerve called the vagus nerve. In the stomach, the vagus nerve will help with digestion in the heart, the vagus nerve slows the heart down. So again, another relationship between the stomach and the heart. Another really important relationship, and the one that I'm going to explore a lot more in this video, is the anatomical relationship between the heart and the stomach. The stomach and the heart are very close in proximity to each other. As a cardiologist, I often have to get uh, patients to swallow an ultrasound probe to look at the heart in more detail because this, the food pipe is so close to the back of the heart that you get some really good views. It's true to say these days that a lot of people, because of lifestyle, uh, develop something called a hiatal hernia. What do I mean by a hiatal hernia? I have a little implement I'll show you. This is a bottle. So normally what happens is your food pipe uh, uh, goes into your stomach. So this is the food pipe, this is the stomach, and there is a little tight band in the diaphragm which allows this connection between the stomach and the uh, food pipe. But in a hiatal hernia, what happens is that this becomes weak, this, this little ring becomes weak, and part of the stomach comes out like this into the chest. And the band is around the middle of the stomach, and this bit is the hiatal hernia. 
So now what happens is if you've got the heart very close to the um, stomach, uh, then of course if you suddenly made the food pipe a bit wider, then there's a possibility that this can actually touch the back of the heart, mechanically touch uh, the back of the heart, and that could in itself trigger off heart rhythm disturbances. So in this video, I wanted to explore the relationship between hiatal hernias and atrial fibrillation. And there was a really, really interesting study which was published in the Journal of Atrial Fibrillation in 2013. This was from the Mayo Clinic. And the authors were Roy et al. And they looked at 30 years worth of records of patients with a confirmed diagnosis of hiatus hernia. And what they wanted to see was whether this group of patients had an increased prevalence of atrial fibrillation compared to the prevalence of atrial fibrillation in the normal population. And the results were really interesting. During 30 years, they had 111,429 patients who had been diagnosed with a hiatus hernia. Of these 7,865 patients also had a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation, suggesting a prevalence of 7.1%. This is way higher than the prevalence of atrial fibrillation in the general population, which is maybe 2%, 2 to 3% at most. So way higher prevalence of atrial fibrillation in people who also had a diagnosis for hiatal hernia. What was really interesting was that in young people, young men under the age of 55, the prevalence was 3.5%. That is 17 and a half fold greater than the prevalence of atrial fibrillation in this age group in the normal population. So significantly higher hiatal hernias, significantly higher atrial fibrillation in patients under the age of 55 compared to the normal population. If you look at women, same thing, 19-fold higher prevalence of atrial fibrillation in patients with a diagnosis of hiatal hernia compared to the general population. And if you look at every age bracket, the prevalence of atrial fibrillation was greater in the age bracket with the hiatal hernia compared to those patients who were of the similar age but did, were just in the general population. As you got older, the differences got less, but certainly in the younger patients, a huge difference, hugely higher incidence of atrial fibrillation if you had, an atrial, if you had a diagnosis for hiatal hernia, which is really, really interesting. It was also really interesting to note that actually when you look at them, younger patients who had the hiatal hernia and atrial fibrillation had a lower prevalence of some of the other comorbidities which are known to cause atrial fibrillation. So things like high blood pressure, heart failure, coronary disease, these are all conditions that are known to increase the incidence of atrial fibrillation. But when we look at this group, younger patients, far more atrial fibrillation with a hiatal hernia but less uh, likely to have things like heart failure, hypertension, um, vascular disease, etc. So this suggests that maybe in these people, perhaps the atrial, perhaps the hiatal hernia, in some ways, contributing to the atrial fibrillation, to the development of atrial fibrillation, because they have less traditional risk factors for atrial fibrillation, but they have the hiatus hernia and they have a lot more atrial fibrillation, which is, again, really interesting. What, uh, now. One other thing which is really interesting is that when you look at the prognosis, what happens to these patients, in general, those patients who had atrial fibrillation and had a hiatal hernia, for some reason, had a lower incidence of complications compared to similar patients with AF in the general population who were not known to have hiatal hernias. And the question is why? Why is it that people who have hiatal hernias have more AF? And why is it that they don't seem to come to as much harm. And there are a couple of hypotheses, okay? The first is because they have a hiatus hernia, maybe the hiatus hernia causes pain, maybe they go to their doctors more often with the pain, and therefore their atrial fibrillation is more likely to be picked up and they're more likely to be started on treatment like anticoagulants, etc. That's one hypothesis. But another hypothesis, and this is more interesting, is that perhaps in these patients, the atrial fibrillation happens because of the hiatus hernia rather than because of underlying structural heart disease. And therefore, the atrial fibrillation is not a symptom of an unhealthy heart, 
but simply perhaps a byproduct of the hernia and therefore the prognosis is different. That's fine. What this points to is an association. An association doesn't automatically imply, imply causation. What we want to know then is, okay, if patients with hiatal hernias have more atrial fibrillation, and if we think that the hiatus hernia is in some way contributing to the atrial fibrillation, then what would happen if you treated the hiatus hernia? Could you get rid of the atrial fibrillation? Unfortunately, there are no big studies that have looked at this. But there are some really interesting case reports to suggest that they, this may be the case. There was an interesting case report by Professor Richard Schilling in which he described a patient who had recurrent atrial flutter and this guy had a large hernia. And when the hernia was removed, the flutter disappeared. There was another case report uh, where there was a patient with paroxysmal atrial flutter. He didn't respond to an ablation, but then he was started on PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, and he went back into sinus rhythm and stayed in sinus rhythm for one year. And there was another case report, again, of another patient with a large hernia who would go into AF after eating, and after his hernia was surgically removed, he became free of AF. So all this suggests that, the, that doctors should be taking the relationship between the heart and the stomach more seriously. And when a patient does describe a close temporal relationship between stomach issues and heart palpitations, then it makes complete sense for the doctor and patient to work in partnership to investigate the stomach and manage the stomach through a combination of lifestyle modification and maybe even other interventions for the stomach. So I hope you found this useful. I would love to try and draw more attention on the relationship between the stomach and the heart and therefore would love to hear your stories. If you would like to share your anonymized story about um, let's call this gastrocardiac AF, then please send me an email uh, via my Facebook page, which is Your Cardiology, or also my website, which is www.drsanjayguptacardiologist.com. Once again, thank you so much for taking time to listen to my ramblings. Thank you so much. All the best. Take care. Bye.